Hi, my name is Diana Balawi. I'm a professional makeup artist and hairstylist from Russia and also do a little bit of photography. In today's video, I will talk about brushes. So brushes is the main instrument of a makeup artist. There are people who love sponges more, I'm more like a brush person, I guess. But anyway, brushes play a major role because this is our instrument to create makeup artistry and quite often people tell me that they don't know how to use brushes they get pretty overwhelmed by all the different shapes and sizes and today's video will be a big guide maybe a little bit too <laughs> informative about brushes. It will help you to understand how brushes work if you are a makeup artist who's starting out or who just wants to maybe widen their knowledge about brushes. Or maybe you're just a makeup lover or a person who wants to start applying makeup on themselves and you're curious about brushes, what's the difference between the brushes, their sizes, their shapes, the bristles. So this video is for you. I hope that you will love it and I hope it will be sort of like interesting and fun. And it actually took me a lot of work to do it because I just <laughs> wrote so many pages just to systemize everything that I know about brushes and to make them into a more like comprehensive information, a comprehensive video. I will tell you the main principle to understanding how the brush works right from the start. So if you understand it immediately, maybe there is absolutely no point for you in watching this video. So you should look at the brush and see where the bristles, the brush hairs, the hairs end. And they create a surface, like this ends of the bristles, they create a surface. And this is the working so surface of the brush that will apply the product. And depending on this shape of the working surface, the brushes will work differently. Well, there is exception to this rule. So the brushes for eyeliners, the brushes for the lips, the synthetic brushes with straight hairs, they, they have it a little bit different. Their purpose is different. But all the other brushes, this principle that I announced works for them. As I already said, all the pigment goes on the ends of the bristles of the brush. So this is how it takes the pigment from the product and packs it on the face. And if you want to achieve a nice blending, you will pack it like with the ends of the bristles, but closer to the brush's foundation, this is where the blending will go. So if you apply your products like this, you will have a line here and the blending will go down here. It will be smoother. You can also blend the products out with the bristles as well, but the blending won't go naturally there. So you will have to drag it out. If you put a brush at an angle, it will create the blending on its own. This knowledge is enough to already understand how all the brushes work but I will still go into more details for you. What else impacts the way the brush will work? So first of all, it's the size of a brush. Obviously, <laughs> the brushes have sizes and you should pick up the brushes that will be working on your size of your face, of your eyes. Although they have almost the same shape, they will work differently because of their size. This will be more like a face brush for blush. This will do contour. This you can use for concealer like that. And this will be your brush for your eyes. But this is not it. You should choose the brushes that will suit the size of your face because this brush is a nice blending brush for me. But for another person, it may be a tiny brush or a too big brush. The next criteria is the shape of the brush. So the way it was like sort of cut, although they don't cut the hairs of the brushes, because if you look really closely, uh, the brushes should not be cut. Otherwise, they will be very uncomfortable to use. They won't be soft. This is actually our main principle, but it plays a major role. So 
the brush can have a flat surface, it can be rounded, it can be angled brush. So they come all, in all shapes and sizes, and I will speak about the shapes in detail a little bit later. The next criteria is the length of the bristles in the brush and how dense the brush is. For example, these brushes, they have more or less the same thickness here, but and they have absolutely the same hair type, like bristle type. But because this brush has longer bristles, it is softer and this brush is denser. And last but definitely not least, the type of the bristles. If we basically divide our brushes into bristle types, there are natural hair brushes, there are dual fibers and there are synthetic brushes and also mixed brushes of course. I would like to talk more about the bristle types because this is a very important point point. and first of all I will talk about the natural hair brushes. Usually they make the brushes out of goat hair, out of squirrel hair, out of uh, pony hair and Siberian weasel, just weasel or sable. These are the main bristles that they use, the main hair types. And if you can't find cruelty-free bristles out of goat hair, you can't make a brush out of squirrel hair or weasel hair without killing the animal. So these small animals, they get killed. And for example, to create a brush out of a squirrel hair, they, they will only use their tail hair because this is the longest and if you are creating a big <laughs> squirrel brush there will be like more than one squirrel there because there is not so much hair on their tails. Well then there is a question why do people still use natural bristles in creating their brushes if it requires quite often killing the animal? First of all it's easier to create a brush that will work beautifully with natural hairs. Secondly, they are performing much better in blending than any synthetic brushes. Thirdly, they also transfer the product from the pan to your face much better. Also brushes that are made of squirrel hair or a very fine goat hair are performing much better with very delicate eyeshadows like VZR or um, matte eyeshadows by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Actually, goat hairs, they also differ in their price because of their thickness. So the thinner, the more tender goat hairs are, the more pricey they will be. So the pricier the brush will be. Brushes made of weasel or sable will last you a very long time. They don't wear out as fast as goat hairs, for example. You can even use them for your eyeliner and they will survive. And also brushes made of uh, weasel hair or sable hair, they are very good at packing loose pigments or any your metallic shadows on your lids or also the matter shadows as well so they are very good at picking up and transferring the product without much fallout. What are the cons of the natural hair brushes? First of all they should be used only for the dry textures except for the brushes made of weasel. Secondly the natural bristles may break much faster than the synthetic bristles. Thirdly it's the price. Natural hair brushes will always be much pricier than the synthetic brushes. But at the same time, they're also much harder to be washed and sanitized. So they, you, you can't wash them with your regular antibacterial soap. You will have to use some uh, shum, like delicate shampoo for them and condition them. And that's not it. After washing them, they will also take much more time to get dry. For example, if your brush is that big, comparing to my face, yes. This will take you more than 24 hours to dry, maybe about like 36 hours to be fully dry. But not only you have to wash the natural hair brushes with more delicate soaps or shampoos, it will also take so much time to wash the shampoo off of it. You will have to rinse it 
again and again and again and it will be, and it will still remain quite soapy it takes much more time with, than with synthetic brushes but that's not it they may also cause you allergies if you're allergic to for example goat hair so if you're a makeup artist you always have to ask if the person is allergic to natural hairs or not so you have to be careful with them but our world is moving forward and so does the makeup industry as well as the brush industry so now we will talk about the synthetic bristles Firstly, there is this classic straight hair brushes. They're usually used for lip brushes, for like this angular brushes, for the eyeliner, for the brows, um, this type of bristles. So secondly, there is Toclone. These are the bristles that real techniques use in their brushes. So they are very common in uh, synthetic brushes. They are more wavy and they pick up the products much easier than the straight brushes and they also blend them better so this is a nice step up and thirdly there are imitations so the synthetic bristles that imitate the natural bristles and we have all sorts of types of Im imitations these days we have goat hair imitations we have squirrel hair imitations and like different types of squirrel imitations we have raccoon imitation so the industry is developing and now i would like to talk about why i so deeply love the brushes by anastasia vivozina the ave vozina brand and this is not an ad this is my pure opinion and admiration in her brush line she decided to use as little of natural bristles as possible because she wanted to be as closely to like cruelty free brushes as possible but at the same time not cut corners and make the brushes perform at their best she has natural bristles in only like a couple of her brushes for the eyes because she felt that the imitations were unable to give her the performance she was seeking so she has in some of her brushes like a blend of gold bristles about 30 to 50 percent with synthetic bristles but i would like to say that she is not the first person to mix the uh, synthetic bristles with the natural bristles for example such brands as chile dash or zoeva they also mixed goat hair with toclone but for example for the zoeva brand this was made i feel like more for the price cutting point so she decided to keep the natural bristles for the performance reasons but i would also like to add that she has some brushes with weasel hair these are like very tiny liner brushes they just keep the shape much better than the synthetic brushes and also the weasel hair is more durable than the synthetic hair that's why she has like a couple of brushes with the weasel hair but they're very very small i was googling how it will translate the word bristle like thicker bristle of a badger so it's not like has on the coat but like a thicker thing like not a whisker but still like thicker and i just understood that the google translate does not translate bristles in the brush or hairs in the brush as bristles it translates it as hairs and as english is not my native language what i meant by bristles all this time and i will continue to call this thing bristles because i've heard other people calling it bristles i mean meant the hairs in the brush so if i'm wrong please write down in the comments how how, the, how you call the hairs in a brush do you call it bristles because the google translate gives the bristle name to like thicker hairs like super thick beard type thick hairs or something so i'm sorry if the word is not correct i just don't know i'm sorry but i will continue calling it bristles because what other option i have so uh, she also has a badger like thicker bristles for her mascara fan brush and that's it all the other brushes are made only with synthetic hairs bristles Oh gosh, I will ruin with that the whole video. 
Uh. Another goal that she was trying to achieve is to make dark brushes so that there will be no white brushes at all because she works with colorful eyeshadows a lot and with colorful cream products and her white brushes always got tinted and this is kind of upsetting so she did everything to make the brushes as dark as possible. But what is truly revolutionary about her brushes is that she combined different types of synthetic hair to create a performance similar to natural hair brushes. For example, the brushes number 0 0.11, 0 0.15, 0 0.17 are the brushes made of taclone blended with the squirrel imitation. As the squirrel imitation is a little bit like slippery, taclone is grabbing like too much, the blend creates this perfect midpoint where it's soft and nice and blends and picks perfectly. And for example the brushes number 0 0.2, 0 0.10, 0 0.14 are the brushes made of squirrel imitation and goat imitation mixed together. And because I have synthetic brushes that perform so nicely and also, I'm not a big fan of washing the soap out of the natural hair brushes for ages. I almost don't use any natural hair brushes in my makeup looks and in working with clients. They are easier to be washed, they uh, dry faster, and they're just much more comfortable. But you can't mistake the brushes by Aave Wodena brand with the dual fiber brushes, because although her brushes contain two types of bristles in them. The dual fiber brushes have one type of bristles that are longer and the others that are shorter. Originally, the dual fibers were created to apply only dry products, like powder products. So they had synthetic bristles that were longer and the shorter bristles were made of natural hair. These types of brushes, they polish the uh, dry products into the skin absolutely beautifully and they don't pick up too much. But people started to use these brushes for applying foundation because at that point of the time there were only flat foundation brushes or like most of the brushes for foundation were flat and they started to use these brushes with natural hairs in them like this brush is, is fully synthetic but anyway and they started applying foundation because it picked up a little bit of the foundation and then they applied it and blended it with the natural hairs which was very bad for the brush, actu brush actually because this wasn't her destiny. <laughs> this application method was sort of revolutionary at that point, but to blend the foundation with such a brush you had to go in a circle move motion and if you had any dryness on your skin, all the skin flakes would be enhanced. And although uh, there are synthetic dual fibers like this by Makeup Forever, you can use them for the application of uh, liquid products, but for example, this brush was created still for the dry products only. And I'm not a huge dual fiber brushes fan. I have only two <laughs> brushes of this type, so I will move on. I also filmed for you how different bristle types work with delicate Viseart eyeshadow. So here is how the Toclone brush is performing. Here is the squirrel hair performing. This is a mix of squirrel imitation with goat imitation. Here is goat hair. Now the goat imitation. And finally, a mix with squirrel imitation and very fine goat hair. You can see how much like dust every brush creates. And I really hope that this small experiment is useful for you. Now let's talk about the most important thing, the shape of the brush, how it was cut. Like it wasn't cut, but like the shape, how it was cut. What is her surface? I will start with talking about the like round brushes that have a round shape and then I will talk about 
other types of brushes. So the first type of like cutting a brush is having it shaped flat. As I'm not the biggest fan of flat <laughs> round brushes, I have this one by Makeup Forever. It has only one working surface because as I already said, the working surface is where the bristles end. You can use it only perpendicular, like 90 degrees angle to your face and you have to work around your face a lot because our face is not flat. So you have to apply it like that. But if you go down, you have to rotate it a little bit. So for every little movement, they can also be like flat, but at an angle. Uh, I don't have like truly a round brush. Maybe the closest one is this one, but it works absolutely like the same as this brush, but you have it at an angle, but you will still have to rotate it. And because it's like so sharply like cut, you cannot use it on its side at all. You only can use it perpendicular to the surface. The next type of shape is a round brush and it applies to face brushes and to eyeshadow brushes as well. What do we see looking at a round brush? We look where the bristles are ending and we do like this thing with our finger are starting to end here and this is where the working surface starts. So our working surface is rounded and it goes in this area. So we can not only use the tip of the brush, but it's usable at an angle. Now we can use it not only with the tip, but also a little bit at an angle. And we also pick up the product with it, either with the tip or at an angle. And we have a surface here. And for example, we can rotate it and have a surface here. The same works for the eyeshadow brushes. We just look where the bristles start to end and this is where the working surface starts. We also have it like going from here to here and this is our working surface. We usually pick a little bit more of the product on the eyeshadow brush than we do on the face brush. And we can also work with the tip or a little bit with the side. So they are already much more useful than the brushes with a flat top. Then we are moving towards more like a flame shaped brush. For example, look at these two small brushes. They have absolutely identical length of the bristles. They have almost the same thickness at their foundation, but they have absolutely different tips. So this brush is a round brush whereas this brush is more like flame shaped. So basically its working surface starts a little bit lower than the round brush does that. It gives us a more of a working surface. It gives us the opportunity to work with its side more than the round brush does. And it also activates the tip option when we can use only the tip of the brush. They can change more drastically from brush to brush. For example, this brush has the same thickness at its base. It has the same length of the bristles, but it has a more like drastic angle of this shape. And again, it gives us this surface to work with it. And it gives us a smaller, more narrow tip for more precision. The same applies to the face brushes. For example, this brush is more rounded. This brush is more flame shaped, or it's like kind of squeezed, but, but still this brush is more flame shaped this, than this one. It's a little bit more rounded. So there is not like a very strict border here. Some of them are more flame shaped, some of them are more rounded. So it's very vague, it's like a gray area. But still, we are walking towards this more like flamey shape. And the most drastic I have here is this one. <laughs> this is like a true flame shaped brush. Its surface starts very low. Half of it is a working surface. You can work with it with only the tip. You can use it on its side. With this brush, you can apply products like almost parallel to the face because of this working surface that is bigger than half of the brush. And it will work almost as good as a bigger brush because it has the same working surface here, like, yeah. So 
this is the drastic example of a flame-shaped brush. The next shape of a brush is a pencil brush. If you basically take a flame-shaped brush and shorten the bristles so they will be like super short, like bring this metal thing up, <laughs> this is how the pencil brush appears. What it gives you, as the bristles are shorter, it's more dense, it gives you more precision, it has a very nice small tip, but you can also work with its uh, side. You can work like around the roots of your lashes. If it's a synthetic brush, you can apply lipstick with it, you can apply eyeshadow base on your lower lid. It's a very nice versatile brush that will give you more color at its tip and it will diffuse it on its own with its, with its side. So really love this shape. Also, some pencil-shaped brushes are a little bit softer, some are more pointed, but what remains the same is that they have this like sort of 45 degree angle to its tip, more or less. And looking at it, you have sort of a feeling that you have sharpened like a pencil with a pencil sharpener, and this is the shape you get from this brush. And if your brush is synthetic, you can also blend the pencil with it, like the lip pencil, the eyeshadow pencil, a very versatile shape. The next brush shape, I don't know what name they give to it in English, but in Russia we call it a barrel-shaped brush. It's basically the same size as the pencil-shaped brush, but it doesn't have this tip and it's rounded. So if this brush is like, we imagine that we made it of the flame-shaped brush by raising the metal up. The barrel-shaped brush is made of a small round brush with the same method by raising the metal. It doesn't have this tip, it has like this roundness, so it works the same way as the classic round brush, but it's very small, it's denser, it transfers more product than a classic round brush. And you don't have as much precision and you are also unable to use it at this 45 degree angle as you can use the pencil shaped brush. The next type of brushes is an angled brush. This particular one is not like super rounded, it's a little bit squeezed, but it's still an angled brush. Actually, angled brushes for eyes also exist, but I don't have them right now. If we take our rounded or flame brush somewhere like there, take half of it and a little bit squeeze it. This is what this brush is. So it's like a part of a classical round brush. So if this brush gives you like multiple surfaces, you can work on this side, you can work on this side, you can work on the tip. This brush gives you only one surface. It like gives you like one side of a round brush, which is limiting. But if you feel kind of confused with brushes, this can be helpful sometimes. You will have only two options how to work with this brush. You can either apply it in one direction like that, or you can use it on its side, like that, or on the side. When you're applying on the side, you can go like that, back and forward, back and forward. But if you're applying like that, you shouldn't go back. You can't go back and forward because this way, when you go back, the longer bristles, they just like boom, make a point and you will have an even blending. Some parts of your contour will be darker. So always either go in one, direction like that or use it on its side. Now let's talk about flat brushes. So the first brush is this classic foundation brush. There are people who still enjoy using this type of brushes but I'm not quite a big fan because it has a smaller working surface. As you can see this brush is actually quite good. It has a bigger surface than other brushes. So it starts lower and go up. This is the surface and you have to apply with only one movement. Um, so some people love it I'm not such a big fan. Also, one of the downsides of this brush is, is that it's actually very hard to wash it. So the foundation stucks in between these straight bristles and it's so, so hard to wash the foundation out of it. We also have flat eyeshadow brushes. They, their working surface is here and the tip. So they're very good for packing the eyeshadow on the lids and maybe for applying the eyeshadow to the roots of the lashes with like more a line or something. Yeah. And of course, 
small flat brushes that can be used for the lipstick application, maybe for like concealer application, for a more precise concealer application in some like lines or areas. They were not created to blend, they were created to apply. And their working surface is not the tip where the bristles end, their working surface is like from this middle of the brush till the end so that they apply. This is one of the exception to the rules of the working surface of a brush. Now my favorite category, fluffy and flat. So the fluffy and flat brushes, they are different depending on whether they are more fluffy or more flat. And it applies both to the face brushes and to the eyeshadow brushes. For example, I will consider these brushes to be more fluffy than flat. So they're fluffy flat. They can also be more rounded or more flame shaped. For example, these brushes are more rounded. This one is more flame shaped. And this will give us this like difference of the working surface. Fluffy flat brush is like a rounded brush, but they squeezed it and made this area not round. But the working surface is more or less the same, so you can work on the side, you can work on the tip. With this brush, as it's more like a flame-shaped, fluffy flat brush, <laughs> oh gosh, it's becoming very complicated, it has a working surface starting quite low, going up, and the tip also the side. So you can work with it like that, like that, like that this is not this is not quite comfortable so i wouldn't recommend that but still many variations what is good about flatter brushes it's easier to wash them than the round brushes these brushes for example they are face brushes but they are kind of more flat than fluffy so you can work for example with this brush on its side like with a classic flat brush but we also it's fluffy so it's it distributes the product easier than a classic flat brush and it also has a very nice tip for a precision application for under eyes for example this brush it's like a flame shaped a more flat brush the working surface starts quite low we have a nice working surface here. We can apply powder with a bigger surface or we can more precisely apply highlighter, for example. The same works for the fluffy flat brushes for the eyes. So they are like rounded br brushes, but they were squeezed. So this area is a little not round, it's narrower. Uh, and there is actually a bonus point. If you have a deep set eyes, this shape of brushes will work for your socket much better than a classic round brush, which is amazing, because it's much easier to apply the eyeshadow into the socket this way. And as you can see, some of the brushes are more like flame shaped a little bit. Yes, they have a tip. Some of them are a little bit like flatter, more like classic round brushes. So there are these types of variations. Now, flat fluffy brushes. What these brushes will give you, they will still pack the product on your lids as the flat brush, but they will diffuse it immediately. So there will be no sharp lines with them. As you can see, this surface is bigger than the classic surface of the flat brush. So you pack the product and already have a little bit of diffusion. And if this brush is synthetic, then if you want to achieve this kissed look on your lips, applying lipstick with it is a marvelous experience. And the last one is the smudger brush. It's very convenient for blending out the pencil that you applied on your roots of the lashes area. It's very dense and its working surface is the tip and a little bit going to the side. And also, there are so many different types of brushes for graphic type of stuff, so graphic brushes. There are like straight brushes, they can be also used for concealer or something, yeah. All of them can be used for con concealer if you want to. The brushes that are angular for the liner, for the brows, these brushes, you, you usually use only the tip of them, so this rule of the where the bristles and this is your working surface applies to them. When we go into the, like the classic liner brush like this one, it works not like with its full length, but with almost full of its length, you can apply like, like that. So not only with the tip. I have also some interesting shaped brushes. So it's like an angular brush, but it has angles from 
each of two sides so you can work with the tip but also with two of the sides yes this is the brush for longer lines like very thin longer lines you can't use it only with the tip you will use the length of it this is the purpose of this brush this brush is for tiny details you can use a tip here but you can also use the length of it as well the next thing that really matter with the brushes it's its denseness. The brush should be well built so when you squeeze it you can't really squeeze it stronger than it is already squeezed in the metal but still it should be well built yeah but with the almost like the same thickness at the base the longer the bristles will be uh, the softer the brush will be and the shorter the bristles are the denser it is so it's also very important and this is what applies when the hairs are like the same. Here the bristles are thicker, here they are thinner. So this brush is denser, this brush is softer. See how it bends. It has less of a bounce. This is more like a bouncier brush. And for example, if we take thicker hairs and we put them together very densely, then we get a brush that will work almost like a sponge like that. This one is also, it also acts like a sponge. You can like pat it and it feels almost like a sponge brush. Now we have all that knowledge and I want to show you some interesting shapes of brushes. For example, I have this brush. As you can see, it's like a flat brush that is cut at an angle. So it's also squeezed and it has also these sides. If we look where the bristles end, we can see that it has several working surfaces. Here, it doesn't have a working surface here because here the hairs are very long. So the surfaces are this one, this one, and this one. So what it gives you, you can apply foundation with only this side, for example. Then you take a contouring product and you apply it on this side and it almost doesn't like overlap on the foundation side. So you can apply your contouring and from the other side you can use, I don't know, blush or something and blend everything out. So this is a very interesting brush shape. Fan brushes deserve like a separate few words about them. They're pretty different depending on their size and shape and the materials there. So for example, this brush will be very useful for applying mascara on your like lower lids, on the back side of your upper lashes, for example. Very useful one, love it so much. This brush is more useful as like taking all the fallout off your face. You can also apply a highlighter with it, but I don't find this brush to be the perfect one for this purpose. This brush is like a big fluffy brush but it's squeezed and it has this shape for applying the bronzer the blush you can use like this tip or you can draw the lines love this brush so nice also if you're using this bronzer from charlotte tilbury as you can see the pan is very narrow so this brush fits and picks the product perfectly let's look at the brushes the company is put for us to apply, I don't know, highlight or blush or something. These brushes are a pure mess. I don't consider them to be nice brushes because they have a very small surface area to work with. So this is all we have here. That's it. That's, that's it. So this is where the product will be picked. We can try to apply it like that, but it won't be a nice even application. It has blended out perfectly. We'll have to make so much movements to make it work. So I really don't consider these brushes to be like normal brushes. Well, you can apply like highlighter on small spots, maybe like a bronze into the eye socket, but that's it. These brushes, they're not brushes for me. And now a bonus point. If you feel that your round brush or any shape of your brush is kind of too big to pick up the product to apply on your face, you can always squeeze it and alter the shape. So now it's more like a contour brush, although it's a big fluffy brush. So your hands are always the best tools. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope that you liked it and you found it helpful and useful. Have a nice day and bye-bye.